Hello, ballers, and welcome to the only mid player guide you'll ever need for the upcoming 2022 paintball season. My name is Steven, and in today's video, we'll be discussing the characteristics and principles of the mid player position, or commonly referred to as the number two, as well as break down what you should be doing during the early, mid, and late game. Also, be sure to join our Discord server where we discuss all things paintball, share clips from the previous weekend's practice, and play video games together. Let's get started. Unlike the front player, whose purpose is single mindedly to move up the field, which isn't a knock at the position, by the way, the effectiveness of the mid player is expressed primarily by their paintball IQ and communication skills. They rely heavily on their mechanical skills to be sure, but their purpose is broader than that of the front players. Often their decision on how to support their front player or stop their opponents will make or break the success of a point. They're also required to play the front player position effectively should they lose their own, which adds another layer of depth to the position. If you're the type of player who loves paintball strategy and working with a teammate to push up the field, then this is the perfect position for you. The early, mid, and late game can be broken up into three distinct parts, with each part being contingent on how in control you are in any particular point. Keep in mind that when we talk about these distinct parts, they're all happening within seconds of each other, if not at the same time. The higher up the divisional ranks you go, the faster your decision making will need to be. Let's talk about some characteristics of the number two. As the number two, you play on the outer edges of the field, just behind the number one, act as the connector between your side of the field to the other. Because of this, having a loud voice that projects is very important, carry enough pods to effectively suppress the opponent's front player, somewhere around six to ten plus, and are proficient at running and gunning as you'll spend most breakouts doing just that. Some principles of the number two are that you must communicate effectively and accurately with the number one in front of you and work with them to safely move up the field. Know which zone you are shooting off the break and be prepared to make adjustments depending on how your opponents are stacking up at the break box. The zone or lane you shoot should rarely overlap with another teammates unless specifically outlined by your coach or your game plan. And be able to send accurate shots downrange while running as this will have a greater impact on the outcome of your games than anything else you do. In the early game as the number two, you first need to scout how your opponents are stacking up at the break box, paying close attention to what the opponent's number one is doing and how many guns are shooting your way. As a side note, it is often the responsibility of the number two to call your opponent's breakout formation and which side of the field is being focused, though this is not always the case. What's more important is to ensure your squad knows whose job it is before the point starts. We won't cover all the things to consider when scouting your opponent's stack or breakout formation in this video, but for more on that, be sure to click the video linked in the card above. So, depending on what intel you gain from scouting, you need to adjust the zone or lane you're shooting off the break. These are small adjustments we're talking about, not massive job changes. For example, it's your job to shoot the front player on your side of the field. You aren't usually going to switch jobs and shoot someone else because of something you scouted, unless you and your team have very specific game plans for when certain situations present themselves, or you have a massive brain and your paintball IQ is a thousand. Jokes aside, these types of large adjustments are usually only made by top semi-pro and pro teams who are all on the same page about what needs to happen. Happen. Though that may be, it's still something to be aware of and work towards as you develop your paintball IQ. Moving on. Once the point has started, you need to apply as much pressure as you can to your opponent's number one so as to halt their progress and prevent them from making any quick secondary moves. Something to be aware of while you're applying pressure to your opponent's number one. Your opponent wants to draw your guns to their front players. This is because by doing so, it frees up the twos and three to make secondary moves either right behind the number one or up the middle of the field. This is only possible if the opponent's front player not only survives the breakout, but also takes enough ground to create distance between them and their number two. If you keep this in mind, you can usually score a quick kill on the number two or three trying to make a cheeky secondary move if you adjust your gun off the number one as soon as they cross your lane. Don't commit too much time trying to score a quick kill on the number two or three because it's your job to contain the front player. You don't need to worry about this if you're able to contain your opponent's number one to a bunker close to the break box, as any attempt to break out of this containment by the number two, say by leapfrogging behind their number one, will be stopped by the pressure pressure already being applied to the number one. This is why as a number two, you almost never want to go past your number one unless you have gained control of what's in front of them, or you intend to take a deep route and dive underneath the paint that is coming their way. If not, you always run the risk of getting shot by the pressure coming their way by trying to leapfrog past them without having control. In any case, once the dust of the breakout has settled, usually within the first five to 10 seconds of the point, you must communicate to your teammates what you saw while still trying to contain your opponent's front player. If in the breakout you lose your front player, you need to immediately fight to fill out or plug the hole in your positioning and become the number one. What you don't want is to lose your front player and sit back while you wait for your opponents to come to you. You may also be required to take a big bite up the center on your side of the field if your opponent's front player slips past your zone of control within those first few seconds of the point. Your zone of control is any bunker or gap you can see and shoot. If you don't take this risk, their front player may score free kills on your teammates that are on the other side of the field. 
Now that we've covered that, it's time to move into the mid game, which is where things start to get complicated, as much of what you're supposed to do is dependent on how the point has developed so far. For the purposes of this video, we're going to assume you didn't lose your front player and you didn't score any kills off the break. If you're wanting a breakdown of different examples and how to correctly respond to them, join us live every Thursday where we go over those and many other things. The mid game begins as soon as you either establish a containment of your opponent's front player or make some kind of secondary move in response to your opponent's ground taking, usually just after the first 10 seconds of the point. From this point forward, your ability to gunfight and dodge paint becomes very important, as you'll be spending a good amount of time trying to gunfight both the number one and two in front of you. If you find yourself dying just after the breakout as the number two, you need to spend more time running gunfighting drills and improving your snapshot form. For videos on proper snap shooting form, be sure to check out our TikTok linked in the description below. Whether you make a secondary move yourself or decide to hold your opponent's front player where you are, you'll need to immediately establish a connection between you and your front player so that you're trading off who's holding the line of defense. To establish a connection with your front player, you need to do a few things. First, say their name and tell them where your opponents are at. Tell them how many guns are shooting their way or if their mirror or the person in the same position as them is about to make a move. Tell them if you have control or if you're about to lose control. Tell them if their mirror is looking heads up or inside the field. Try to have a conversation with your front player and paint as detailed of a picture as possible. This will give your front player all the confidence they need to safely challenge and move up the field. While establishing this connection with your front player, you'll also need to relay information to your number three, hopefully loud enough that your other number two can hear as well. A lot of cross-field communication is lost when the number twos aren't loud enough to hear each other. After you've established some kind of connection with your front player and are relaying information to your number three and two, it's now time to make some kind of coordinated push with your front player to get out of your primary bunkers, assuming you haven't already. This is usually accomplished by maintaining the containment you have on your opponent's front player while also pressuring the number two behind them. Your ability to maintain pressure on your opponents is reliant on how accurate you are when gunfighting and how much paint you brought out that point, which is the reason why most mid players bring out anywhere from six to 10 pods. With this in mind, don't stop shooting. That is, if you can do so safely. Doing so allows your front player to more freely move up the field. In the case where you made an early secondary move in response to your opponent's front player slipping past your zone of control, you have a few things to consider. If your opponent saw you make your move, it's business as usual. Try to use this new angle you've gained to maintain the containment on your opponent's front player while also keeping up the communication and looking to pressure the number two behind them. If you think your opponents didn't see you make your move, then this is when you can set up a trap or wait to punish some kind of mechanical mistake. You'll also want to go silent as the element of surprise is key to the success of this play. This doesn't mean you lose connection with your front player, however. Head nods or hand signals are often sufficient in letting your teammates know you're listening. Knowing when and for how long to hold a trap can be tricky. We'll cover this in a later video. Generally speaking, the best thing to do is to listen to your teammates' callouts, paying close attention to what's happening on the other side of the field, and go with your gut. If it feels like you've been holding a trap for too long, you probably have. After you've made some kind of coordinated push with your front player to get out of your primary bunker, or punched up the gut in response to your opponent's ground taking, all the while containing your opponent's front player hopefully, you've reached the late game. I should mention that you don't always have to take a primary bunker that's towards the back of the field as the number two. You can make a push up the center of the field off the break and work with your front player all the same. It's all dependent on the layout and what moves are afforded the number twos. In the late game as the number two, you need to identify what's preventing your front player from progressing up the field or threatening their survivability. and work with them to eliminate those threats, either by shooting a player outright or pressuring them long enough for your front player to reposition or continue their progression. Often as the number two, you're eliminating opponents by shooting their hoppers as they try to stop your front player's progression up the field. As your front player moves further and further up the field, it is up to you to determine how best you can help them stay alive while trying to minimize the distance between you and them. Sometimes the best play will be to fill out to the corner and hold down their tape. Other times it might be best to push alongside them, providing support from a different angle. Whatever you decide, consider what ground or position you might lose if your front player is eliminated and make a decision based on that consideration. Keep in mind, you generally don't want to be too far away from your front player. As you begin to eliminate the players in front of you, be sure to still communicate with your teammates and not let your opponents retake the ground you just killed them out of. Otherwise, what was the point? Congratulations! You just won a point for your team by effectively playing the number two. That's pretty cool. Remember that your success in this position is linked not only in your individual and decision-making skills, but also in how well you coordinate and communicate with your teammates, especially your number one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss when we drop our next guide. Also, don't forget to check out our Discord server in the description below where you can discuss paintball or play video games with like-minded individuals. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, but until then, be safe and have a good one.